So today I want to talk about how do you make a function run? I want to look at all the different ways that you can put together a function and the different ways that you can call these functions. So here I've got three functions. Declare them three different ways just to show that they're going to work in any of these uh, different uh, ways that we put them together. The first one, just a simple function declaration. The second one is a function expression. And the third one, I've got an arrow function where I'm passing in a parameter. So first of all, anytime you have a function, regardless of how it's declared here, if you have the name of the function, for example, Rick, all I need to do to make that function run is add the parentheses at the end of it. So if I run that, then here, there we go, it runs and it outputs this function, or the, the console log. If we do it with any of the others, we can change this from Rick to Morty or Summer. It's just going to do the same thing. We're just putting the parentheses at the end. Parentheses are going to make this run. So that's our first one. The second way of doing this is we can use call or apply. Now we take the name of the function, so we'll go with Rick again, and I can use call or I can use apply. Both of these methods belong to every function object. So if you have a function object, it has access to these methods. Now call and apply, they do the same thing. They're going to call the function, make it run, and they take by default, one parameter, which is what is the context? So what's the object that's going to be used? Now I'm in node, so I can use the global object. If I was in the browser, I could use the window object, or I could use something else. Here, I can say that summer, this function, that object is the context for running this one. Now we're not needing it for anything here, so I can leave it null, I can leave it blank, and this is still going to work. So call and apply, just another way, it's just like adding the parentheses onto the end here. And if I clear this out and run it again, we can see, there we go, let's get Swifty. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here to make this a little bit easier for you to see. Okay, so we've got call and apply. That's our second way of doing it. Now related to call and apply, we can also use bind. So we could use one of our other functions, and we use bind to call that. Now the difference between call, apply, and bind. Call and apply, I have a video on call and apply and bind specifically. I'll put that link in the description for you. These two call it immediately. What bind does is it takes the function Morty and it applies whatever object I put inside of here. So I could just create an object here, a generic object, and then I can pass that in as the context. This is not going to immediately run the function, but what it does is it will create another copy of the function which is bound to this object. So inside of this function, if I was to use the keyword this, what I'm getting back is this object right here. So I can now put that into a variable and then at some point in the future, I can call that function and make it run. So let's do this again. So there we are, Rick being called twice. And then this one here at the bottom, that is our line 23 here. We're calling the Morty function. And if inside of that function, right here, instead of console logging that line, if we were to say console.log this, now what's going to happen, there we go, there's that object O that we created. So the keyword this is pointing to the thing that we bound. And it's the same thing here with this null or undefined or if I put some other object inside of there. So if I put the global object, there we go, here's the global object being written out. So that whole thing, object global with all of its properties. Okay, so comment those out, leave them in there. So this is our second way. So number two is using call, apply, or bind. 
And if you're wondering the difference between call and apply, it's really just how the other arguments, if you wanted to pass other information in, call lets you put in a whole bunch of arguments like that. Whereas with apply, we put in our object followed by an array of all the things that you wanted to pass in there. So that's the difference between call and apply. They're both running the function. It's just how you pass other data to the function. That's what changes those. All right, so first one was with the parentheses. Second one using call, apply, or bind. Following that, we have pass-throughs, callbacks. Now here, I'm going to call the function summer. So if I do summer, and I can use any of these methods, I'm going to use just the parentheses on the end of it to make this run. Now it's expecting to get something passed in. It's expecting a, uh, a, a parameter to be passed into that function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uncomment these three lines here. I'm going to put my object back in there. So with my object O created, I'm passing that in here. I'm binding Morty to this object. And that's what M is. M is a copy of Morty with O bound to it. Now I can pass M into the function summer. This F1 is now going to be pointing to M that was passed in here. And M is a copy of Morty with O bound to it. So when I run F1, what I'm really doing is I'm running Morty. So it doesn't matter that I've changed the variable name. I've just created a reference inside of this variable F1 is a reference to M. M is just a reference to Morty. So all three variables, the F1, M, and Morty, they're all pointing to the same spot in memory that's holding this function. So if I save that, clear this, and run it again, and there we go. We're about to call another function. That's the console log inside of summer. And then F1, we're adding parentheses on the end here. We're getting this object O. And if we look back up in Morty, that was this. So we are actually running both these functions. OK, so moving on to the next one. So the uh, third one is. All right, next up, I've pre-written this one to save a little bit of time. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a constructor function. So this is just a function declaration, but I'm treating it as something that's going to build an object. Now, when this runs, when this function runs, I'm going to console log out this message. Because it's a constructor, it means that I can add things to its prototype so I'm going to create a method called help inside of this object, or inside the prototype for this function. This function builds an object, and then the prototype for this function has a method inside of it. So I'm going to be able to do this. I can say let me equal new me seeks. This is what makes it into a constructor. So let's comment out our one from above, clear this and run it. Or you can see that by calling it with new, this is running. Now, if I console log out me, we'll see that it is one of those meseeks objects. There it is. So it is an object of type meseeks. Now, because we created an object of type meseeks and we've added this to the prototype, it means that we can now call that method. It's going to go to the me object which is one of these, an instance of this, and it is going to want to call a method called help. It's going to look inside this, say it's not there, so let's go to the prototype. There it is. We can call that. There we go. So here is the help method running. Here's the constructor function running. Both those are running. Or sorry, the first line here, this is the constructor function running. And then the meseeks, this is down inside of here, where we're console logging out, what is this object me? And then we're calling a method inside of the prototype for this object me, 
which is an object of type meseeks. So these are a couple of other ways. We've got call a constructor using the keyword new. And then we're also call a method on the prototype of an object. And related to that, if we were to add inside of here a method, we could do this too. We could say this. When you call a function with the keyword new, you're constructing an object of this type, as I mentioned before. We can add something to the prototype like we've done here, but we can also add a method that's actually going to exist inside of here. So this is going to be the object that is created when we run this function. When we say new me seeks, this is creating an object, sending it back, and we're putting it inside of me. So if I add a method right here, now this can be a regular function. We could create an arrow function. Doesn't really matter which kind we use here, but we are creating something that can be run. Now that we have this hello method, I can come down here and I can say me.hello. So this is going to be number six. Call a method on an object. So instead of it being inside of the prototype, it's actually inside the object that is created. And there we go. There's the hello. So we're getting hello, and we're also getting the help function. And when we write out the meseeks object from line 41, the console log me, you can see that now inside of that object, we also have these two methods. And they are functions. I mean, we're calling the methods because they're inside of an object. But really, they are just objects of type function. They are functions. All right. Now, Last one that I wanted to talk about is dealing with events. So using an event listener is a way that we can trigger something to run. Now there's two different ways that I've got this written. One is with node, and then here is the version of the same code running in the browser. They deal with events in slightly different ways. So if I uncomment this, and I'm going to comment these three lines just to clear some space when we run the code. So I'm importing, again, this is for Node because I'm running it in the terminal with Node. This is how we add events. We have to require the events module. Then I can create an object of type event emitter and I can say, hey, I'm giving you a listener right here. So my event emitter object has a listener for this event, Swifty. When that event happens, this is the function that I want to run. So if Swifty happens, we're going to console log out whatever message gets passed in here. I've got a set timeout just to delay it so that we can see that it is happening at some point in the future. My Swifty object, my event emitter is going to emit an event of this type which is going to make this event listener run. And here's the message that we're passing in to write out. And there we go. After one second, it wrote out the message inside of here. So that's the version in Node. Now, if you're working in the browser, it's similar code, just structured slightly differently. There we go. In the browser, you would create a new custom event. So this is an event object. I am now going to create my own object, which is going to extend event target. We do this because um, objects like a, a DOM element, a piece of HTML, they are these DOM elements, but they extend event target. So that means really just event target means they are allowed to receive events. All right. Now I'm using the class syntax here. I could have done it with the, the old syntax, but I used the old syntax up above where I was dealing with the prototype. Um, here, this is the function that runs when 
I call new my obj. This constructor function is going to run. The super is going to be calling uh, event target to create an event object. Then we have or an event target object. And I've got one method in here. This method is going to actually be sitting on the prototype of my obj. All it's going to do is write out the event object. So here we have new my obj. This line is going to create one of these objects. It's going to extend, so it's setting its prototype at event target. It's going to be able to listen for, receive events. And then we're going to have a method on its prototype where we can write out a message. If there's an event listener, we want this method to run. So we create our object and then add event listener. So obj is my copy of this object right here. I'm adding two event listeners for the event called Swifty right up here. This is that custom event that we made. Now this is a name. It's like a label for the event. That's what we put inside here. It's like if you were adding a click listener to something. So Swifty is what we're listening for. When that happens, I've got two different things. One of them, I'm referring to the method log that is connected to my obj object. So this guy has this log method. I'm going to call that when Swifty happens. But I'm also going to run this other method, which is just going to write out the event type. So this would write out for us Swifty. This label right here. That's what the ev.type is. It's this. This one is going to output the whole Swift object. Okay, and at the very bottom, just to make it the same as what we did up above, I've got a timeout that runs after one second that's going to dispatch the event. So on this object, I want to make this event Swift happen to this object. When that happens, it's going to trigger both of these listeners. Obj has listeners for that event, two of them. These two functions are going to run when that event happens. And that's that. So that's our seventh way. So quickly to review, we've got a bunch of different function declarations. Regardless of how we're declaring them, how we're writing the initial functions, we can call them by adding the parentheses, by using call, apply, or bind. And then once you've got a reference to it, you can use the parentheses, or I could use call here again. We can call a function and pass a function in. Inside that function, we've got a new reference to it. Again, we could use the parentheses, or we could say f1.call or f1.apply. All these would work. Then if you've got a constructor function, which means you can use the keyword new to call that function. And then there's functions that are inside or functions that are on the prototype of that object. We can use those with your original object dot help dot hello is going to target either the ones that are on the prototype or the ones that are built in inside of the object. And then the final one, the seventh was working with events and event listeners. So I will leave a copy of this code for you in the description down below. Lots of topics, lots of important little bits of information inside of here. So if you have any questions, if you want um, a different explanation for any part of this, please feel free to leave your comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.